Good evening. My name is Francisco Aragon, and I direct Letras Latinas, the literary initiative at the University of Notre Dame's Institute for Latino Studies. In the fall of 2002, on this campus, we held a three-day Latino Poets Conference featuring five writers, one of whom I was meeting for the first time. I went on to read what became, for me, a seminal essay by this poet, and which I've always kept in mind while doing the work I do as a literary activist. Here is how it begins. For many years, when my writing was solicited for anthologies or special issues of magazines, I always sent out a wide variety of work. But after the initial thrill of publication had worn off, I started to notice that, invariably, the pieces that addressed my exile my mother, my childhood in Cuba, were the ones selected and reprinted again and again, making it seem as though that's all I have to say, a three-note piano. Since this happens continually, yes, it still happens, it feels as though I'm being told there's something abnormal and unseemly about my stepping out of the ghetto of, of ideas assigned to me. And hushed embarrassment seems to accompany the return of my poems about psychological and spiritual states, the delights of visual art, or even my relationship with my backyard. My creative territory had been predetermined for me, silently, invisibly, and I began to experience such limitations as a glass cage. The author of this essay is Aleda Rodriguez, and it was published in 1999 in an anthology titled Sleeping with One Eye Open women writers, and the art of survival. In many respects, my impetus for organizing Angels of the Americlips, readings and colloquia, new Latino poetries and literary translation, the mini conference that brings us here this evening, is a response to Aleda's essay. Thank you all for being here tonight. And I also want to give a shout out to those of you beyond this space who are viewing tonight's reading in various parts of the country. This is the first time Letras Latinas is live streaming one of its events. I want to thank the following organizations for helping us spread the word. The Poetry Foundation, the Academy of American Poets, the Geraldine Dodge Poetry Festival, and a special shout out to the Poetry Center at the University of Arizona, which is hosting a viewing party in Tucson. I also want to thank our campus sponsors, starting with my institutional home, the Institute for Latino Studies. Deep gratitude as well to the Henkel's Lecture Fund which is administered by the Institute for Scholarship in the Liberal Arts, the Department of Romance Languages, alongside the Jose E. Fernandez Hispanic Initiative, the Graduate School, the Department of English, the Department of American Studies, and finally, the Creative Writing Program, with whom we partnered 
in conceptualizing how we would engage our MFA graduate students. They are the ones who have been conducting oral history video interviews with our four poets. And they are the ones who will be doing the honor of introducing them this evening. Please join me in welcoming them to the podium. Hi, everyone. Um, my friend Zach and I will be introducing Rosa Alcala. And I will go first. When I read Rosa Alcala's poetry, I envision each poem as a basket. Her poetry is intricate and tightly woven. Every line and word is precise. And following the path of these words dovetails you to a broader design in which the poem's fullness is peeled back. The Big Reveal is a piece of writing that is at once compact, textured, beautiful, and most of all, fat full with multiplicities of meaning. By using the word precise, I don't mean to imply that Rosa's poetry is simply industrious, though industry is often a subject in her writing. Industry imp implies sterility. Rosa's poems are not sterile in that they deal with the messy structures of identity, politics, language, and family. The poem questionnaire in the Angels of the Americlips anthology ends with the lines, the scripts are impossible to read. Could I have written them myself? In getting around the subject, a different poem, the speaker opens by listing ways that I avoid calling you and ends with a litany of ways that I avoid your practiced evasion. As these passages suggest, Alcala's poetry is invested in exploring interpolation, subjectivity, speech, intersections of languages, and everything between. Alcala is the author of a poetry collection, Undocumentaries, and two chapbooks, Some Maritime Disasters This Century and Undocumentary. She has also translated poetry uh, by Cecilia Vicuña, Lourdes Vasquez, and Lila Zimborain, among others. She teaches in the Department of Creative Writing and the bilingual MFA program at the University of Texas at El Paso. And we're so happy to have her here. Alethea Tusher in the MFA program. And my name is Kelsey Castaneda. And tonight we have the pleasure of introducing Carmen Jimenez Smith. Um, over the past month, we have both come to fangirl <laughs> Carmen Jimenez Smith's poetry and her cray cray woman empowering uh, message. In her poem, Radicalization, she asks the question Do you feel equal? She is a poet who compels me as a reader to think about myself, my gender, my sex, my voice, and my poetry, and then to ask myself if I feel equal. Sometimes I don't know the answer to the question, though, but I'm thankful that she asks it. For me, her writing is at once epic and personal. As a woman reading her latest book, Milk and Filth, I am at once inside and cut down from the historical narrative from which my gender hangs, prodded open with each poem and found whole. We had the pleasure of having lunch with Carmen today, and she's super cool. She's very chill. Yeah. <laughs> and she said to us that she's planning on reading some poems that were left, left out of her most recent collection, Milk and Filth. So we're gonna use a poem from that book to have her tell you about herself. So in her poem, Parts of an Autobiography, Carmen tells us about her own writing, which is inseparable from and yet impenetrable of the particulars of her own life. She writes of her mother, her life was difficult because she was a brown woman. This was and is indisputable. The poem goes on in that same, it goes on to say, when I first began writing poetry, first began thinking of poetry, I was certain that I could rely on the I, which turned out to be the most elusive quality, and ends the poem with a simple bang. 
Necessity is the mother of all that pours out of me. And this is what I return to when I read Carmen's poetry. It is necessary. This is undoubtedly the reason why she was awarded the Juniper Prize for Poetry, the American Book Award, Poetry Society of America's New, Poet, New American Poet Series, and nominated for the National Book Critics Circle Award. In addition to her accolades, she is publisher of Naomi Press, editor-in-chief of Puerto de Sol, professor at the University of New Mexico, mother, wife, and author of one memoir, three chat books, and four books of poetry. She has written articles on the Poetry Foundation's Harriet blog that have opened my world in my own endeavors as a poet, translator, and teacher. So as a woman of Hispanic heritage and as a poet, I am personally thrilled and really humbled to have had the opportunity to speak with her and to introduce you all to the lovely and talented Carmen Yemena Smith. Good evening, my name is Christopher Moravez and I'm an MFA candidate in poetry. I have the distinct pleasure of introducing Roberto Tejada. Um, Roberto Tejada is a poet, a translator, an art historian, an editor, and a curator. His career, much like his poetry, spans time, crosses borders, changes landscapes, and ultimately investigates the unique relationship the Latin, Latino identity has with its past, the present, and our future. Roberto earned his PhD in interdisciplinary media studies from the, uh, the English department at the State University of New York at Buffalo. He has authored several books of poetry. He has written two books on art history, served as the executive editor for, editor for Arts de, de, de Mexico, served on the editorial board for Vuleta. Did I say that right? Okay. <laughs> and is the founding editor for Mandorla, a new writing for the Americas. Yet this impressive career hardly describes Roberto as a person or as a poet. Uh, having the distinct pleasure of having lunch with him today, I can honestly say that he not only writes great poetry, he embodies what it means to be a great poet. Um, his breadth of knowledge is daunting, and he uses his intellect and his art to subvert the dividing lines between oneself and the other. One example I, I found of this today with lunch was he kept subconsciously refilling my coffee cup before he refilled his. And I found that small little gesture to be emblematic of that uh, crossing between the self and the other. Through sound, rhetoric, and form, Roberto's four poems in the Angels of the Americlips unapologetically connect the violent intersections of faith, culture, and identity through an indigenous past, a globalized present, and an uncertain future. With the rawness of a punk rocker and the intellect of a scholar, Roberto creates wonderfully nauseating lines that exacerbate the anxiety and confusion oh so humanly felt when anyone begins to explore their position in this murderously unjust and terrifyingly complex world. Roberto's tactic is to strip reality from the facade of truth and expose the interactions, or expose, excuse me, expose the effect the world has had on the concept of a Latino identity. By placing the self as a nexus for these interactions, he sonically transposes deities, he bears witness to the state and its exchanges, simultaneously economic and militant. He peeks, pokes, and prods the intersecting lines of art, history, and identity to give our unfortunate souls a glimpse behind this unsteady collage we call existence. So prepare your psyche for the intensely kind, intelligent, and humanely powerful Roberto Tejera. <laughs> Hi, everyone. Rodrigo Toscano is the author of five collections of poetry and currently resides in New Orleans. He is a language enthusiast and a labor activist. These passions collide in his creation of Collapsible Poetics Theater, a collection of instructional theatrical poetics, which won the 2007 National Poetry Series Award. The poet performer is concerned with hypercapitalism, with the contamination of poetry, Toscana demands, you had an epiphany about your own repression, but not anyone else's? He dares to test poetry, to stretch it into political motion. Refusing containment, he offers his worker reader a mobile experience 
wherein players are body-body movement, zooming, erratic, jumping, disobeying. His work mooms in our ears, screams, culture, culture, and we watch just as closely as we listen. Where is that sun in the ground? We can feel it if we dig into the script, past it, perhaps, deep into our quotidian dirt. Rodrigo Tostano wants to pull you into the contact zone, as he calls it. He wants you to answer, how is it that we're 400 million distinct entities here? How is it that we're singular and one at a time? How is it that we're each one 400 millionth of one whole? How is it, how's it that we're each 400 million times more than the other? There's a strange sense of familiarity, living in Rodrigo's scores, acts, and scenes, the diced communications of humanity we struggle to hold together. The playwright beckons us to break the fax machine of corporate racist America. He wants us to move and to speak. Players and entities and audience and pigs alike, beware of the performance with which you are intrinsically involved. Rodrigo Toscano is here to thrill you. <laughs> Good evening, everybody. I'll start off. This is from Explosion Rocks, Springfield. The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield left a strip club next to a daycare. What is explosion to a slab of drywall? What is drywall exactly? Hi ho! Why do people strip? What is daycare? Why day? What is night? Care. Why daylight? Why daylight? Why daylight? Why daylight? What is care exactly? Gas. Where, where from gas? Why gas in cylindrical hollows? Friday, the day after Thursday, the day before Saturday? Always. How goes gas in there? Surging, surging, surging in predetermined patterns for bodily needs and discomforts. Ars Poetica, I'm ill, I'm federal, I'm on leave, I'm a child of refuge, I'm holy, I'm a shit, I'm desperate, I won't tell you anything, I'm first gen, I'm gen X, I'm tied up, I'm bipolar, I'm barely fertile, I'm a secret, I'm the now, I'm indifferent, I'm a disgrace, I'm funny, I'm assistance, I'm not saved, I was Mormon, I'm atheist, I'm mysterious, I'm scared, I'm head of household, I'm quick-tempered, I'm day job, I'm night ghost, I'm failure, I act white, I live bankrolled, I'm deliverable, I'm not gang, I'm crazy ex, I'm slippery, I'm post, 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 I'm greedy, I'm double-crossing, I'm delusional, I'm of average BMI, I'm hairy, I'm indebted, I'm weak, I'm non-confrontational, I'm in therapy, I'm sorry. I'm empowered, I don't have a tattoo, I don't have money, I have too many ex-friends, I'm agoraphobic, I'm a versifier, I don't have a valid passport, I've never been arrested, I should have been arrested. I knew too much, I can barely read, at times I can barely rise, at times I'm queerish, I'm marginally fit, I'm arthritic, I'm flaky, I have few skills, I'm salty, I'm a time bomb, I'm baptized, I'm dry, I'm chronic pain, I'm big at mom's house, I can't remember how many, I am obstructionist, I'm a master. That was my confessional. Thank you very much. The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield leveled a strip club next to a daycare. I remember the breeze right before, burrs of was it willow, slant falling, the gray sidewalk schist granules scattering, a brown dumpster lid smushing its green plastic, sandwich meat. A rat made its debut, but for a moment. I remember an awning strings knotted tip soft thudding a window pane, timpani's uneven beat, the rustle of stray trash, bass strings almost rising, but never. And the chopper, the chopper, spittle to tootling, spittle to tootling, a proud boot landing on obedient asphalt, the stern, uncrying chrome, the flighty flames decorative, 
gas tank. I can't forget the beryllium blue sunshades, orange hued at a glance, and the stars and bars, starched, pressed bandana. Nation, idol, gorge. But for a moment, then, boom. At Hobby Lobby. She tosses a bolt of fabric into the air, hill country, prairie, a horse trots there. I say three yards and her eyes say more. What you need is guidance, a hand that can zip scissor through cloth. You need a picture of what you've lost to double the width against the window for the gathering. Consider where you sit in the morning Transparency is appealing, except it blinds us before days begun. How I long to captain that table, to repeat in a beautiful accent a customer's request. My mother cut threads from buttons with her teeth, inquiring with a finger in the band if it cut into the waist, or kneeled against her client and pulled a hem down to a calf to cool a husband's collar. I can see this in my sleep among notions. My bed was inches from the sewing machine, a dress on the chair weeping its luminescent phrase. Sleep was the sound of insinuation, a zigzag to keep holes receptive, or awakened by a backstitch bawling under the foot, a needle cracking, blood on a white suit. When my baby's asleep, I write to no one and cannot expect a response. The fits pour, always. No one wears it out the door. But fashions continue to fly out of magazines like girls out of windows. Sure, they are my sisters, their machines my own. The office from which I wave to them in their descent has uneven curtains made with my own pink and fragile hands. Nightshade camouflage. Time to galvanize in measurements of emergency your paperwork now with aptitude. Hidden universal law you let someone else insinuate, pretend to evolve as to possess a small equivalence, maybe a word for lunar quadrant, maybe some other upsurge. Coastal strip for falling shell each hour on the hour that only those who bolster by and by the firmament, the wane, the cleaver, armaments in a position I associates out of ether for days in camouflage for a throng whose fatality you can pinpoint given barley, nightshade, citrus, fig, Branching cables irradiate the unsettled residencies in grove, in low-lying brush, in timberland, and under siege, who knows how longer arable. Post-identity. Yes, Virginia, it is a monolith no one else sees, though it overshadows the animals in their crates stacked so corners of one stick into corners of others for morale, they think about a next life or uprising. I suggest you let them tell you they're creating realities you believe is an olive branch, but meanwhile worry over the future and let that take precedence. Did I mention the math dearth? That's a secret to be the one twelfth, and too bad that spot's taken by a much more legitimate diaspora. So you wait, that's part of it. You wait, so that's why our shoes pinch. They already bought them, plastic made elsewhere. So at what hour should you shut the mouths of them, walk out on them, thump them with truce, and how do you break free of odium, Virginia, or explain it as our current millstone? And what of the slumbering beast on the other side of the door and his agenda, his narrative of what you should be, like achieve more but toe the line, like fill this hole and shut up, and why the performance of fitness that feels like just mask and mimicry or gauntlet because the scheme wasn't visible, the one from which my hand was molded by my betters. We're so past it. Stop thinking in the past. It's like shitting on the giant tapestry of us says the censorious voiceover, voiceover, 
which really brings us all down. You should know that. You should know about that's what they say, Virginia. They have a straight face when they say it. Liquid M. From a radio haze of association, there emerges an assembly, teeming number of persons to a person always seeking to enhance with cruel insight an attitude or viewpoint that submits, I am nothing, a cloudburst of arms and digitation. The assembly pointed its rotary ligaments as though with flashing arrows to say, look at the repellent, look at the repellent little stain incriminating the deviant boy with my features and in possession of all my belongings. I derived from his displacements, or he from mine, in a lament not of sorrow but of bitter obligation to whatever it was the stain betrayed. But you promised I was able to discern from an audience each face suddenly half obscured by this lectern serving as my foreign shell each so noted a form of agreement as to make demands and be anxious for the former boy to proceed with my thesis. I did, I might have said, of the tiny humanoid specimen in place of the many pages I was meant to recite. The biotic gel was a living system diluted thus into a nascent organ shape still attached to its source, although aching for another measurement of life. The assembly still waiting. What else but to remove the thin protective overlays each one held together as if by some internal gravity commending all approbation of the resin heads in attendance. Chattering swelled at the expense of the magnetic syllables in my lecture for which the boy returned to provide radiant confirmation of an antithesis, one that made intelligible a world as it appeared when temperatures from the rain day of apparitions oozed as from the starting point. This was a problem. Post identity. Am I just a brown winged dove and can you modify your art to accommodate my precious otherness? I can do that too, even outside of buffoonery. And yes, we're friends, though I'm possibly that friend you tally on your list of goodwill. Thank you, by the way, when you domesticate my otherness. But when do we integrate? When do we take it to the next level and stop pretending that your show isn't wan phoned in, scared of its potential to offend the august king? Those other ones pretend because they're still false hope and Woodstock and Bobo, because they've hawked our asses for Mars exploration and fountains of virgin's tears or filling their faces with plastic, buying zombies, buying into nostalgia for somebody else's bootstraps and blood, etc but lamenting with zombies, bags of flesh that even gated communities can't keep out. Am I twice as many than the 80s? What can I surrender and in return, when do I pierce my daughter's ears, that mutilation I privilege, that I earn through half assimilation? How do we meet halfway when you own the road and the toll is steep? Why is it hard to hear, to believe, to process that you invented the difference? And why are we undoing words like they have no currency? Take my place for a day, walk in the huaraches that I don't have, but I play one on TV, a credential afforded to me for equity, but be honest about where we are. Am I an animal in my tree? Do I make you laugh? Am I the animal on the crocodile's back? Dear Maria, Dear Mary, Mariah, Marie, dear Mama, Mamacita, and Mommy, dear fourth wheel of the Trinity, dear Puerto Rican ingenue in a red sash, dear off with their heads, dear diva, dear aria missing its M, dear storage engine, dear ships in your name, dear asteroid discovered in 1877, dear song by Café Cuba, Green Day, the Jacksons, Men at Work, Blondie, Ricky Martin, Wu-Tang Clan, etc. Dear Maria, spoken in the bird's tale of Papua New Guinea, how do you solve a problem named Maria? 
dear pool type reactor, dear uranium, how you enrich us, dear Spanish biscuit, dear sacrificial, sacrificial virgins of red or blonde hair, of dark brunette, of the slip apron or veil but never a hat, of the fresh complexion turned composite, of Jack the Ripper's complete works, of fluency in Welsh, Spanish, English, Quechua, French, of obscure and undocumented origins and of Las Colonias, Querida Maria de Los Angeles de la Luz de Jesús del Refugio, walking home or, or waiting for transporte de personal without executive safe routes, dear Señorita Maquiladora, dexterous, tolerant of tedium, model workers for Electrolux, General Electric, Alcoa, etc., dear Queen of the Plasma TV and Print Cartridge, dear Miss Stainless Steel Appliance, dear Crowned with Cigarettes, Soda Cans, Boot Prints, dear Left Without Nipples in the Desert Branded, dear Virgen de Guadalupe, hand, hand us your sanitary napkin, blessed art thou, your blood is on everything. The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield left a strip club next to a daycare. Spartacus sprinklers, top rail, serial number 218A, inspector, 480F, Shangxi quality products, Nighthawk importer, San Bruno, California, Roman Roads distributors, Phoenix, Arizona, port of entry, Tacoma, Washington, tankard, 1017903, inspector, 4201, ILO quarterly report, Case study 1142, Ting Ting Liu, 23, female, ID 41732, flat platform 12, line 8, station 4, muscular skeletal paralysis, third metatarsal tape to second phalangeal, fourth proximal splinter to fifth distal, OSHA region 1, final report, incident 2267, gas, explosion, inspector 505F, Sprinklers, inoperable, logic tree, branch 20, system of safety failure, mitigation device, 16 drill holes, stoppered, well burrs not filled. Citation 29 CFR 1910 159 C tweet 12. Notes Inspector 505 F on leave. DOL budget sequestered. Public Law 112 25. District 2, 112 Congress, United States of America. Voice activation. Do not forget that a poem, although it is composed in the language of information, is not used in the language game of giving information, Wittgenstein. This poem, on the other hand, is activated by the sound of my voice, and luckily, I am a native speaker. Luckily, I have no accent and you can understand perfectly what I am saying to you via this poem. I have been working on this limpid voice through which you can read each word as if rounded in my mouth, as if my tongue were pushing into my teeth, my lips meeting and jaws flexing, so that even if from birth, You've been taught to read faces before words, and words as faces, you'll feel not at all confused with what I say on the page. But maybe you'll see my name and feel a twinge of confusion. Have no doubt my poem is innocent and transparent. So when I say, I think I'll make myself a sandwich. The poem does not say, I drink an aisle of bad trips. Or if I say, my mother is dying, where is her phone? The poem does not say, try other it spying, spare us your foam. One way to ensure the poem and its reader, no misunderstanding, is to never modulate. I'm done with emotion. I'm done, especially with that certain weakness called exiting one's intention. 
What I mean is Spanish. What a mess that is, fishing for good old American bread and ending up with a boatload of uncles and their boxes of salt cod, a round of aunts poking for fat in your middle. So you see, Wittgenstein, even the sandwich isn't always made to my specifications. It's the poem that does what I demand. Everything else requires a series of steps. I call the nurse's station and explain to the nurse, her accent thick as thieves, that I'd like to speak to my mother. She calls out to my mother, it's your daughter. Really, she says this in Spanish, but for the sake of voice activation and this poem, you understand I cannot go there. And she hands the phone to my mother, and my mother, who is not the poem, has trouble understanding me. So I write this poem, which understands me perfectly and never needs the nurse's station and never worries about unintelligible accents or speaking loudly enough or the trouble with dying, which can be understood as a loss of language. If so, the immigrant, my mother, has been misunderstood for so long. This death is from her last interpreters. Liquid M, you'll recall, this was a problem. There appeared a physical but weirdly porous boundary between inside and out at this juncture, between an ability for speed to excite my behavior and a belated quality of attention that recalled a wild pageantry of pinpoints and dimming glow, flimsy laws that narrowly commanded me to move forward with the sum total I collapse of liquid M. Actualities of day made implausible other migrant episodes all conspicuous as matter out of place. Boy and assembly dissociated from conditions wherein to thematize society is a synthesis about the stranger even formally excluded from a crowd was to incite the boy's impersonation of the unfamiliar. He palpitates for an increase of affability and euphoria. I anatomize for a burlesque of bloodstream combustion. He gives good entrance in increments and transit losses. In him, there is deficient what I solarize from very near in whose total composition every moment obtains. At last, he assembles with a series of modular parts, so many ingots and quarters for our present chances that I ulcerate, I discharge, I dissent, and make soluble. The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield, Lovell Strip Club next to a daycare. The gas explosion in Springfield on Friday evening spared a daycare next to a strip club. At the beginning of every day, what is to be spared? What is to be felled? Hi-ho! At the end of the day, are steel buns equal to municipal zoning definitions? At all times, what is fire? Is fire on fire at every moment of every fire? Give it a break. We're burning up here. Is fire keen on burning? Is fire alert? Is fire hopelessly, beautifully distracted? Is fire itself in the act of stripping? Or is it fire's thing to make others strip? Frabba jabba, in approximate patterns, surging, amassing, escaping, culture, planning, accident, conciliation, life, doink. Post-identity. 
what is your provenance? Where did you suffer? What is your affiliation? How are you acquainted with industry? What will you bring to our guild? What are the qualities of a good surf? What is your mission in life? And could you sell me this instance? What is the last pornography that engaged you? Can you talk about your research into the unsolvable? How would you feign a diverse audience? Is a reader a client? Did customers occur to you as an outcome? What are three positive strains in you? Does discontent drive you into the market? Does blunder drive you to work on a regular basis? When can you start with selective memory? Is this the racket you had planned? Was this a natal force? Are you an open boom town or a crafted urn? What animal rules the roost? Does that animal work as aphorism, pure revelation, or dispatch from the front lines guarding the monolith? Have you made anything good with your outrage? Built an avatar to touch it? Or is it merely an act for your status, an all-purpose effort against digital shaming? Will an underclass's hunger qualify for your attention? Or will they have to track down the legitimacy for themselves? Can I guarantee you have a chronicle of the moment? Or is it fraught with the 70s, therefore fraught with a vulgar density of self? Is that the hitch aesthetically, thus ethically? Does it seem insurmountable, the desire for such validation? Or could could you break free and record, be recorder? The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield Little Strip Club next to a daycare. I remember the plume right after. Orbs of, was it cinnamon? Black rising, vapor gray, whitening, shingle, powder rain. A dumpster lid sheared off a of gravestone's angel face. A hawk's claws claim the stump. I remember two spouts of thin flame, blue, making an X, mind's waking dream. The hissing of gurgling plastic, supplicant, sick, stomach's inner eyeball, and the bathtub, the bathtub, sitting pretty, sitting pretty. The hysteric roof flopping in an unfazed floor, the wise, ever wakeful, steel beams, the cheery glass beaming everywhere. I can't forget that purple doorknob horny at a glance and the plump couch stuffing foam blazing angry city's final chorus but for a moment then shh Heritage speaker, what good is it to erect of absence a word like radiator when we've vents that expel heat as air? When I teach my daughter to speak and build a woman out of me that is not her mother but some propriety, a treason of simple subjects, I never had use in Spanish for the word barn and then woke up and a horse was staring at me, Joe Brainerd. Softly pureed, cooled, this diction dumb in either tongue. But what is a mother's warmth if not her wit? Bernadette turns to me in the shower and says, motherhood is now fashionable among the girl poets. If so, I want my hat, a feather in it, Mahler Mays, in fact. The Transport Hours, part one. Held fast to the evolving horizon whose upsurge encircled sooner than it was possible to ascertain before it had hovered there, a touchtone away, act now. For there, even in that brief appraisal, in agreement with the roadway, with the motorhome and trailer park, was conveyed the promise of serenity and freedom, a completion. But there had come by then a tremor in time between always striving to assert, oppose, not this year, maybe next, to contend the proximity of arriving. If in some way, no longer here in flight, still from that expanding sphere, departure in the half tones of a secret. Wish for some vicinity in a middle landscape, not of this earth, an ether not especially of our species, desert wakefulness, 
adrift in the leave-taking, double wide the nights debatable, in such vinyl glow advancing, detached from the planetary management, this substitute revenue for all the proper names. So instated was travel in the continuum, flash expanse as though by black light gels, dead end of the street for the only transport hour available in the elastic state of imperfect clarity. Center point of the story, its own eviction, this time certainly, this time like the last demand to be a part, drawn on such empowerment and skill as to guarantee survival, my body now a chaos of excitement, a heat warp over all the improbable minutes and whose method now to be one with the women. I assume the powers of mutation, the aptitude of animals. I duplicate, I meld with the binary numbers. I so co cooperate with the machines as to make myself invisible. I sanction the authority of gravel, I indent where the layers ebb, I cross beam, even as I contradict the pattern assigned to the surface of the land in lesser accidents of stone and sky. Post identity. Am I the mariner and whose bird was it? And how does absolution work? And why not float abroad? And did you ever pick up a hitchhiker? And what is the lostest you've been? What is the most Catholic sin? How many ages do we have? And does even art die and go to heaven? Or does subterfuge ever talk amongst itself? And why would you believe this mouth? Was there starlet in that boy? Who tried to untomb me? And do the books tell us about the ne necessary denunciation? And the one in which you are the actor, and I'm, am I the audience or the other way around? Am I actually the mariner, the one who louses up the place? Am I a sign of the raptures to come like a pre-rapture? Am I a blur on the lens? Am I that false flag operation filled with dead immigrants in a SoCal McDonald's? Will I be reincarnated as elephant, as king, as flea, as barnacle? Why am I really the locus of your discontent? Why am I not your wife, intimate landlord, aesthetic overlord, just general dom bitch? How do I hang from your neck? When will I be graced with immunity? I duplicate, I meld with the binary numbers, I so cooperate with the machines as to make myself invisible, I sanction the authority of gravel, I indent where the layers ebb, I cross beam, even as I contradict the patterns assigned to the surface of the land in lesser accidents of stone and sky. I merge the four directions into solitary segments. I engineer the semblance of a habitat into the subject of hydration. I review the foregoing. I account for the universal crowd in the long withdrawal. I doubt the imperative, the end effect, there being some confusion as to whether partition was in reference to a present tense or somewhere in the distant shimmer system, backflash measured by the alliance of my mothers in triplicate under the vapor light, flame story of the urban commons, inheritance of the dwelling notes, a passing through of sidelight for mercury in retrograde, semi-solids for the global south, cathode haze over the settlement, means tantamount to the outcome, such looming as for the pursuit to be ongoing, evanescent, committed nowhere but to the temperature perspective. Post-identity. I'd once have left Brown behind, having already left the tribe behind in her tongue and the garb that made me there, because I was taught to leave the hoi polloi behind. To leave behind the daughter in my mother's tongue meant I could leave behind inferiority complex. I leave behind the houses we keep trying to make look both like this nation and Wonder Woman's invisible crotch rocket. I know I'll leave my hurts behind. I'll hope I'll leave yours, probably not. Progress is such duty when it's for other when it's for the other team, sisters and brothers. I try to leave defiance behind, but it's stuck to my shoe. I've left behind a surprise zygote or two, my feminist ascent's blood, diamonds, and I left behind dignity after five minutes because of my anarchic spirit. So the worm is in me, also inside me the poison of historical angst. Once I broke into pieces, now I break into holes. Outside the coil, I've learned the most from the cracked, even the larks we go on. Lastly, I escape 
the grim pilgrim's burlap sack swinging the animal into the heavens before launching it into the river after the seizure of fireworks on that Independence Day. I had long entertained the idea of anger as my primary survival gift, such a robust promise of afterlife. Paramore. English is dirty, polyamorous. English wants me. English rides with girls and with boys. English keeps an open tab and never sleeps alone. English is a smooth talker who makes me say, please. It's a bit of role playing and I like a good tease. We have a safe word I keep forgetting. English likes pet names. English has a little secret, a past, another family. English is going to leave them for me. I've made English a set of keys. English brings me flowers stolen from a grave. English texts me, slips in as, as emoticons, goes to all the mixers. English has rules but accepts dates last minute. English makes booty calls. English makes me want it. When I was younger, my parents said, keep that English out of our house. If you leave with that miserable, don't come back. I said, God willing, in the language of the Inquisition, I climbed out my window but always got caught. English had a hoopty that was the joint. Now my mother goes gaga over our cute babies. Together, English and I wrote my father's obituary. How many times have I said it's over and English just laughs and says, come on, senorita, let's go for Chinese. We always end up in a fancy hotel where we give fake names. And as I lay my head to hear my lover breathe, I dream of Sam Patch plunging into water, a poem English gave me that had been given to another. The Freddie and Gas Explosion in Streamfield, the little strip club next to a day, care. Spartacus sprinklers, top rail, serial number 218A, scrap metal, metal yard F2, strip steel tanker 28, Samson Recyclers Limited, Pittsfield, Massachusetts. Steel Workers Local 4128, Smelting Furnace 48, Slab Beam Rollout Batch 81.24. Semper 40, Steel Precision Corp, Brooklyn, New York. Steel Workers Local 4200, Section Cutting Station number 12. Steel Cylinder Holotype 2B, Store and Send Department. Spirit of 76, Commercial Furnishing Corp, Slidell, Louisiana. Steel workers, local 3725, Sargon sprinklers, bottom rail, serial number 3218, sinks coating station 12, S S S S sanding unit 25, steel testing station number 7, sprinkler standard specification 29 CFR 159B, station inspector 13, sales packaging room H, Sort and storage garage four, second incident of forklift crushing workers' toes. Spirit of 76, personnel motivation, free cupcakes, Friday's director, Chet Baker. Steel workers, 375, Chief Steward, Marinela Fernandez. Section five, clause two, management shall comply with all state and federal standard regulations. Safety committee, grievance number 78, unannounced station rotations, inadequate training. Staff training regulation, arbitration hearing number 51, P36, Sargon Sprinklers, first annual wet t-shirt contest. Supersonic Dance Club, third floor, Picayune, Mississippi. A girl leaves the croft. Cottage work, the spinner at the door, a halo of sun, a tidy room behind her. Maids at the wheel sit blithe and happy. Such chastity in the pre-electric or in the moldy flax under the finger causing beauty's allergic reaction. We're all framed in this whodunit. A lover waits for hair to be thrown from a window at dusk. A witch holds stolen braids singing out to the fool, which is us. Or we hold other prostheses against our ears thinking to get ahead. 
or we are thrown into a bush blinded by thorns and the woods our only friend. What's more important, the wheel or the distaff or finally the prick? Later, a girl leaves the croft and is scalped by an unboxed machine. What savages these Englishmen? Then the missus sinks marriage in a pint. Go feed your own barn. Thus, sociology begins. To keep conditions wretched, men argue the loveliness of the calico workers. And their theories of proper carriage, how it's manufactured, are born either an elegant, stunted growth or the hot stove cure. Either way, the lot ignorant, prejudiced, and sensual, which leads us to a kind of photography like a loose coif and white stockings held at the thighs by two unrepentant bows. Who produced these pillars of the community? This is art in the age of ribbon production. She stands so still for the image, a flash of pussy, the industrial age. Tower, Hiroshima. Solid block, a fracture surge that in past partial view could admit such beholding. Cascade that makes red the horizon to allow as though appearing at a single point. Lines to elongate the knell of proximity to the X degree, this encompassing source. Siren gnaw, human paste expanding long syllabic burn and buried below crosshatch. Invasive sight line drawn as if from eyes of the spellbound to commissioner statistic. Image ever present when ready to vanish in each expiring particle of stranger blood here in attests the oily frequencies of rain adjusting its amplitudes to a figure igneous person intended to the gone so acknowledged as for the shape we sing and eviscerate. Pink constituent of matter from the underside and mosses prosper for all the missing. In violet place to hold the light a thousand suns in bronze script a thousand one. under action as fire with the power of the universe, reverse, reverse it in a fraction of time. The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield Level Strip Club next to a daycare. What is leveling to a bit of stability? What is stability exactly? Hi ho! Why do people slink? What is it to have slackness to slink? What gives slack its slickness? What is schluck it up, slick and slimy care? What is doink precisely? Croink, where from foink? Why doink and croinky foinkiness? Friday, the dearth after purge day, the fray before patter day, always. How goes in there, escapes in random patterns. Four? Post-identity. An L-City, red silt, oil church massacre, GoPro gunneries, poised missiles, camps of refuge, wounds from striking innocent bystanders, political kidnapper, las mujeres de wherever, brown black corrective segregation, the fudge number of food supply, water as currency, meltdown, sadism as foreign policy, SB 1070, xenopublican prayers, circle shootout, martial idiom infrastructure, dismantling, bacterial assassination, boy dictators, common rapacious industry vaccination, conspiracy, fracking, separatist, disability pain vendor, indifferent law measures for the preservation of strict class hierarchy, 
hierarchy, too much goes into history and becomes a, a series of wounds pierced into the, the gauzy window of our becoming history, a steamroller, but it's also the refugees' lost luggage. Sometimes you have more than you need. We are bound to overlap, yet you helm the vessel into the drip of our excess, more heartless colonialist in the extremist Congress. They just want my whole stop up, stopped up, my mother deported by the failure of boomer prog progress instead acquisition and red threat nostalgia. Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield level of strip club next to a daycare. I don't remember the very moment flashes of, was I daydreaming? Biloxi bound, the termites swarm at dusk, balling up, sprinkling, a skeeter swirling in its hotel pool for the first time. A no see -um bug popped out of nowhere, but for a moment to romp, I can't Say, I recall Cleopatra's hairpiece flying off in a speeding four-cylinder vehicle, empire of the great somewhere, but never. And the flying fish, the flying fish, hither flopping, hither flopping, the carefree palms twerking, injured, the bald, unyielding sun, giddy, tentative feet, knee-high water, gripping. Have I forgotten the name of that triple IPA, something like Rondé, the moon, a la batshit, and the ample-sized black polka dots in my eyes twerking carefully. Empire of the great somewhere, but for a moment, then, then. Autobiography. Factory is something not heard but written in degrees as breath it never signs off delivering you to you as a finished but minor product, something copied and stapled, slipped into your foot locker. You can't value it. All you can do is replace it with an ethnic cuisine to riddle the ancients. It's all you can do to keep from setting your face on fire. When the cat runs from one side of the house to another in an effort to find the childhood friend who died from eating old blinds, the page is left to NAFTA. Factory chases the cat out of the work, though local manufacture is the aim. We should all be ashamed by the niceness of the working class. All, can I get you something? Factory gives you ways to get ahead that are industrious but uneven. Sleep with this history. Find yourself under that Volvo. The office for agents is the etymology of factory, what we now call the conference. It reads properties for poetries. Factory is both fact and act and mere letters away from face and story. Vanishing. Amulets that share a kinship in the histories of light and language when I unite the number nine to 27, the word tangerine to lemongrass, meadow spur to thistle, glimmer to destello. Drive that fades, splinter of duration evanescing, double life conjured by vocables from a zone of repetition. Mm. Its glow at the origin, vision contingent at the level of the letter, oh, all things abrupt now intermittent. Claims singular never less than overstatement when I slip into view out of joint with experience, when attributes of bliss and cataclysm reside not in portentous totality, but in the ordinary detail attention requisite for me to tell the narratives of sight and sound and transformation. Discrete words, a partial view. But even as I surface, subject to predicate, at best a proposition, belated reason, I am the cause of my thoughts. Why in the domain of the ether, in the pharmacology of everyday matter, in the flattened contours, my singular?
post-identity. I was light from the mouth, from every part of me. I was of the earth or a scar in the earth among the ruins of late civilization and rose from it and became saint reptilian spirit. And I could taste the wheat and coal and gold. I was like a trinity of bounty and I was a haze like smog that becomes resistance, that becomes soldier. And that I was animal as truth. I was the spirit I had dreamt about being more cloud and star than given. I was just edges, the density of water, a system of reciprocity, in and out, the fade of lost fugitive sus substance going south and inside the disposition for supernaturalist decadence that disappears in the annals, yet leaves a taste in the mouth, metallic and lime, the sense of erasure, disillusion, I was speed and an insistence to reset the orb center of gravity. I was risen from foam, necessitated by colony, sired in violence, exported as luxury item. Still vanishing. At best a proposition, belated reason I am the cause of my thoughts. Why? In the domain of the ether, in the pharmacology of everyday matter, in the flattened contours, my singular life, a social statistic. Is the charm not of narrative consequence bestowed on me a script of action as to navigate the intangible space of so much undigested information? Rip in the web of meaning when I cast and draw. But owing to that gash where to see is to know, am I careful in my unwanted thought? in desires for such a gesture as to beholden, persuade. Limberness untangle the strict partitions without hazard to the shell protective of all persons provisional in settings that I reflect, I cover a ground, I quicken, I substitute the vanishing with constituent parts regenerate, deprived of a halo released from this fixity? Am I not without radiance of my convenient forgetting and every day because it so beckons in the recurring custody of a world around whose mindfulness we congregate and over which we are inclined to argue? Post-identity. When do I get a chance to ask them because it's a them? Am I reclaiming separatist or reinventing our defini definition? Can I trust the momentum? Will they let me be jurist or will I be barred from bars, claimant or defendant, bottom or top? Or are we going to get a historical because of the thing with the thing? What if I were to just leave the flotilla? What if I just leave it behind me? What might I join? Where would be my allegiance? And how would I construct? Or where might I construct? Where I might find the suitable, the shapely? How constructed do I seem? Am I architecture or shelter nature? Or how would you define what I am or was what if I was just that what you wanted? How should I want? And how should I locate it? Because it's loose and hot. It's hot and ill-tempered. So where should I keep it? Can it be denatured? Can it be nature of the seventh dimension? And how would you determine if I find myself inside of some point of view? So what to do with it? When it doesn't suit, how do I manage when your construct, when it pinches like a vice, when it scrubs finances with strings, devours co-ops, whitewashes with entitlement, with phallus? Where do I live? How do I build a home on sand? How do I find scarce materials to build a home I take with me? Do I cultivate the mother tongue to form brick, or do I adopt the new land's material? When I build, to, I adapt to code to form the form, where is it that I build and shall I ask for permission? Do I beg for a license? Do I require a license that explains my claim to the land I live on and maybe own from a thousand years ago? Can I squat in a space and call it mine? Do I commandeer a space and call it my subject slash territory slash exile? Do I build a tunnel under your tunnel? National Affair. As you roll your cigarette faintly, our attraction unfurls like an anthem. Your back to Mexico, my back to what once was Mexico. 
We envision each other in place of someone else, in place of place. This trip to freedom, a trick of a fear. Somewhere out there, a bale bondsman and meat flipper lie profligate in a bed of divided territories, confident the fence will hold against recessive traits. For a moment, your mixed parentage wets the paper's edge. The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield, Lovell Strip Club next to a daycare. What is blood to constrictive tissue? What is constriction exactly? Hi, ho! Why do people nation idol gorge? What is engorgement? Why gorge? What is disengorgement? Why vascularity? Why mascularity? Why femascularity? What is nation idol gorge precisely? Flame. Where from flame? Why flame in both nostrils? Ploding Friday, the day within Friday, the day within within Friday, the day within 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 Friday, always. How goes flame in there? Spittle to tootling, spittle to tootling, spittle to tootling. Engageable patterns for regulated flow and frabba jabba. New Erotic Designs for Furniture by Cecilia Vicuña. This is my translation. Dreaming of a vast world, we have come to the definite conclusion that physical positions in a civilized world are too constricting. Therefore, we would eliminate the position sitting in a chair and suggest instead a different kind of furniture that allows for a multiplicity of movements and physical situations in line with each body's specific wiring. This idea will be of special interest to those who obsessively or by obligation remain immobile for long hours. For example, students, office workers, machine operators, meeting attendees. Models will be built for those who hate to write while sitting, allowing them to kneel, lie on their bellies, squat or hang upside down. This furniture will promote the health and beauty of all its users, thanks to the peculiar increase in blood circulation and inevitable protuberance of thighs and asses, which are undoubtedly part of my plan. Or why the assembly disbanded as before. Hosanna in the borderline cinder block warehouse, as much applause as possible to collapse inside an ambulance now that conveys the intravenous bags and bottle holder, 27 stones from here to the Idlewild, to the gun fields. It's a place you find automation nurses who labor in gray green subterfuge in all over stripes, a round of punches to the lower jaw for my part in the main. So I get it now, I'm the chosen one for reassignment, face so altered as to beguile. This is enemy convenient, a purview suitable to very new cosmetic methods. Question is, the admin, diazepam, and other hypodermics, were they counteractive or now consistent with enough cases as to compel canvassers to anticipate first signs of panic, sleepwalker antecedents? Tray tables in upright position, crushed ice out of open mouths, air-conditioned ward redolent of superstores and tattoo shops, or was it morphine sulfate and protocols applied to disable the congenital twins. Here's the world news. To junk science prizes, wax candy lips in tone of flawless, if always accented sentence. The kind of talking from another world where my mother was Marlo Thomas and there were rival techniques contributed to the celebrity of my seven-sided disappearance. Or was that all my aneurysis when I doubled in size as from her pocketbook? Adorable, but already diminishing.
The Friday night evening gas explosion in Springfield, level of threat. Close up next to a gate care. Bleed it here, the gas, watch. Gauge zero, see, both ends. Cinch it there till it pools. Gauge should read 25, double tap it, why not? Eight, has to be eight feet, O2 tanks, and this one, or five foot wall between. Now that's premise regs, right? COs have their own regs, zone, each one has its reg. Same principle, you'll see. Double strap it, always. These trucks, they shake, awful. Brewskis at the bouillon? Nah, stick a fork in me. This shift always, I'm cooked. Thursday, right, at the hall. You should chair it. Why not? All right, buddy. Be safe. Don't let them gals fleece you. Host identity. The animal imagines what life is in his fiefdom, what the edges of his domain are, what parables become policy, vice versa, the animal susses out confederate from the horde. The animal defines the age's pathology. How will the animal cure it? How does the animal see my worry and recognize it? How does the animal solve the animal outside of time? Does invulnerability become the animal, serve the fiefdom? What is the give and take away? Is it enumerative, magnitude, inescapable class, fortress? We all did grow up frozen at that slant. Did not Christianity attempt, among other things, to freeze that seesaw? Are we up or down? Are we over and out? Can we clamber up from the pits? The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield leveled a strip club next to a daycare. Unbutton here, this strap, even jugs, see, real nice. Now clip on this red tail, one minute into it. Double flare it, why not? Five can only be five per booth, including you, or eight if two of you. Now this, this club's reg, right? Other clubs make their own. Boss, each has a vision. Same old dance, count on it. Well, maybe two buttons. These strobes, they blind. Crazy. Night owl shots at the coop? Ah, scoop me up on a cone. This shift always, I'm um, licked. Thursday, right, at my house. You should share it. Why not? All right, honey, be safe. Don't let them guys steer you. Post identity. How shall we remind the mathematicians, Virginia, and the politicians and the statisticians too? How do I capture the mic and describe about care, be, getting carried on currents or dismembered on borders and raised by their appetites? Why are we wed so much to it? So horchata, mulata, corbata, pirata, and avi piñata, metiste la pata cuando abriste la boca, te lo digo with love. But it's not what you think. This palta aguacate paradox. You don't get to know about that. Why tout it if I don't get to the critique? Will someone listen? And if so, how will there be reparation? How do they hear from their Cadillac's box seat, silver chariot? Don't mind if I do. The seats lean back into giant palanquins shouldered into the stratosphere like a condo on Mars. How's the air up there? And by the way, I charge by the mile where they listen. Will they listen with respect, with the Republic? How will they feel when it's explained and it's not feel good? Bodies like chattel and pens because of a venerated and infinite factory and infinite pliant wants, bones, sugar, fecal matter, gristle, the pliancy of adolescence, and what of the old guard enforcing their own story? Do we break them apart and bury them, set them on the shelf? Do we push them out on the ice flow or take away their scepter? Do we extend ourselves into it again? Do we let them in on the plot or do we burn them? After John Donne, no textile an aisle entire of itself, every woman a piece of cloth made a part of the machine. If a graphic tea be sold by Old Navy is gapped the less, 
as well as if a maxi skirt were, as well as if thy friend's skinny jeans or if of thine own were. Any woman's toil dresses me because I am involved in shopping and therefore never send to know for whom your sister sews. She sews for thee. Untitled by Eduardo Milan, Uruguay, 1952, lives and works in Mexico City. Now that we're nothing, for example, we can be the rain. Certainly, the rain welcomes us with no hesitation, even when it begins, and now it begins. Drops on the window panes, it welcomes us. This item, the rain welcomes us. Kiss me. Frailty, weave a thread around the bird's wee foot, neighborly conclusion of the rain or finish, weave as much. A kind of cardboard box with fragile, written in agile hand, no trembling inside. Let us be fragile now that we're not the ocean. A form welcomes us. Migraine. Titere. Titere y titulo. Titere sans titulo. The tring, tring, tring of Tylenol sans coding, tattered tripas and tripping balls on pain, titere in situ, an extremis, tres turnos chiflados, the thrum of cartoons burned into theories about my tender heretofore era, opening a drawer, grating torrents of distemper, mothers in bed otra vez, vete, even the tumult of breath too much or too vampiric, Titere en la falda, titere doblada, trembled in the tower away from the drudgery of thinking or trying or even a stir. The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield Level Strip Club next to a daycare. Spread out the ice like this. Twelve chocolate, three white milks. Watch how I wedge them in. The roster should say fifteen. Do a roll call, why not? Four, only four can go this bathroom and that one. That's this center's regs, right? Other ones have their own. Counties, each one decides. Similar norms, you'll see. Yeah, check for leaky ones. These cartons, they rip, tons. Rump shake shooters at skis? Nah, crunk on without me. This shift always, I'm zonked. Thursday, right, at the wreck. You should share it. Why not? All right, girl. Be safe. Don't let those kids crank you. A rush of chambers. The soul needs no self-reference. It's busy earning pleasure and moral reasoning holding us upright, yet we endure so many tricks when all we want is the tang of souls touching, just want more of the means we wanted when we still shone with that naivete called hope, and in response our souls improvise another extravaganza to quell our gnawing guts. And about the word idea soul making you uncomfortable, I wear it on me because I like all notions derided as a thicket of cloying thuds or as no longer germane soul qua soul say. And now that I'm older, the more tenuous risk is soul, which some leave behind. I found one dusty in the back of an old flaking book, calling my name a sibylline song, drawing me in, not like the bearded god in the clouds, but traces and tones and slithering vapors, a metaphysical Cheshire, telling me I could finally evict the angry soul who became chairman of me for some time. I don't blame her. I was being permeable like a mist is. Today my soul is a deflated balloon hissing her air out, falling into the ecstatic arms of the wide sky to land on sky's wetted lip and wait for audacity, the birds urge, fly little soul, fly. 
So imagine all your bodily urges crying out at once, a single clamor of being, and you'll know what I mean, why it's so sexy. Suddenly, the borders of everyone blur into one hot mess, bleeding, breathing, learning, drinking, stabbing, golding, dying, milking, stroking, digging, glistening, gesturing, shackling, bounding, staining, chasing, greening, punking, dittoing, barricading, and working it, levitating, cheating, clouding, defending, depressing, lying, alabastering, fretting, narcolepting, lulling, solipsizing, not getting past the beginning, splitting, sicking, adhering, framing, furring. In return, the soul weaves and houses the above tally to then pull herself away from the sky like a scud missile and into that dimension without sensibility where the soul is an art crevasse to fall into and becomes strata into the future which won't even have eyes left and will be populated only by post-annihilation human ephemera, no human. The Friday evening gas explosion in Springfield leveled a strip club next to a daycare. What is fantasticality to a neuron of gray matter? What is gray matter exactly? Hi ho! Why do mitochondria insist? What is death dodge? Why dodge? What is undodge? Why quasars? Why quasars? Why quasars? What is it to quase out exactly? Plasma. Where from plasma? Why plasma in cylindrical hollows? Friday, a light year after Thursday, the tetramillisecond before Saturday. How goes doink, 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 doink? In there, squirming, squirming, squirming in quantum jittery patterns for cosmic potential and actualization. Thank you. There are books, I think, still out there, so have a look. Thank you for coming.